Our next film is from Doug Phillips. With the presidential elections fast approaching, the interview takes us to the eve of a presidential candidate's announcement to run when he is blindsided by a surprising controversy. The interview was written by Phillips in 2004, but could very well be from current headline news. Here we have the interview. <laughs> deadlock. The top two candidates are still holding strong, but there is talk of drafting a dark horse candidate. A name frequently mentioned is that of Mitch McCabe, the Senate's Mr. Amiable. All the others, the shops do this every way, so the dead far eyes is the trip to be. Rush of wind, it's up the sound. I thought she was never late. We don't have time for this. We got all the time in the world. Thank you. Sit, please. Closer. Remember, voters like warm family men as candidates.
Kiss for good luck? We'll pass, thanks. Save yourselves. You should probably think about a new haircut, too, Senator. I think I can advise him adequately on those matters. No need for a campaign manager around here. <laughs> think all the money I'll save. Not that I mind free advice. I was just wondering who died and left either of you in charge. Photos are uploaded. Can we move this along? We want to make tonight's papers. Ease up, honey. She knows her job. They'll start the balloting again at 10 p.m., Mitch. Anything they don't get to read before then won't do you any good. <laughs> don't worry, Miss McCabe. It's all under control. I can uplink from my laptop right here and paste the text and the photos right into today's edition. Shall we begin? Shoot. Senator McCabe. It's Mitch. Just plain Mitch. All right, Mitch. It's been an interesting convention. Nineteen ballots and still no end in sight. Yes, it's unfortunate. Makes us appear indecisive and probably drives a few voters away. But actually, it's a fine example of democracy at work. If everything's always cut and dried, what's the point of a convention? Some people say that one of the top two candidates should withdraw for the good of the party. What do you say? Well, they both had broad support in the primaries, and they each control about 40% of the delegates. After all that work, would you withdraw? I might, if I knew I couldn't win. And hand the nomination to your rival? I might look for another alternative. Ah, uh, yes. There's that hardcore constituency that says neither candidate is acceptable. So your name is being floated. Which is why we began to get Secret Service protection yesterday, and why you're here today. You're looking forward to the prospect of Mitch being drafted? Yes, somewhat. When Mitch first came to Washington in the Reagan Revolution, you weren't that thrilled, were you? Well, no. She sure wasn't. It was over a year before she joined me and made Washington her primary residence. I think she was probably hoping I'd just quit and come home. So, Ramona, when did you morph into Hillary? Don't worry, I won't use that. You'd better not. And how about you, Mitch? You've been a representative, then a senator, for almost 30 years. But the presidency would be quite a step up, and not one that you planned on. How do you feel about it? Well, I've been in public service a long time, and expect to continue. On one level, this seems overwhelming. But on another level, it's just the same profession with a few more duties attached. And someone has to do it. You don't sound like you exactly welcome the possibility. I'd never have sought it. And with my eclectic beliefs, I'd have been butchered in the primaries. But if the office seeks me out, that's another matter. I'll do what my country calls on me to do, just as I always have. Okay, I think that's a good take for tonight's edition. I think so, too. I'm glad we offered you this exclusive, Miss Bryce. You're at the top of your game, even if you are a little pushy sometimes. One finger pointed at me, four back at you, ma'am. Give me a minute to type this up and send it, and then I want another segment of interview, okay? I don't think we have time. No, I do. I like your style, Ramona. Let's keep going and give her something to print tomorrow. And send. Okay, it's in the ether. On the newsstand this aft. Oh, thank you so much. So, Miss Bryce. Aaron's fine. Aaron, what else did you want to cover? Some people have said because you two are childless, you lack one of the prerequisites for leading the nation. That is so unfair. Can he help it if he got cancer down there? 
My third term in Congress it was. I have to say, though, it does have its advantages. I've been more easygoing and friendly to everybody since then, both sides of the aisle. So that's what transformed you into Mr. Amiable. You could say that. Sure didn't hurt. But you could still commit troops or launch nukes if you had to. Yes, I could. Aaron, we're covering old ground here. Is there something you're leading up to asking me? Well, Mitch, you know how you claim you can always vote your conscience? Because you never do horse trading or pair voting. And you're unblackmailable and all that? My voting record and the reasons for my votes are well known. But there was that paternity suit about three years ago. A woman... Her name was Nadia Westbrook. Yes, she said that during your first term, while you were, as you said, living alone in Washington, you fathered her child. What is this? Mitch was tested and cleared. He wasn't the father. Just because he wasn't the father doesn't mean nothing happened. How dare you? Okay, that's it. You two. What do I call you? By our names would be nice. But hey, you works too. Whatever. This young lady needs to be escorted out. Not so fast. Mitch, don't let her drag this up. No, she has a point. There's no way to prove that I was never with Nadia. But then again, how do you prove that anyone wasn't with anyone? Well, when you're in Congress, it might become a matter of public trust. A question of whether someone could use dirt to influence your vote. Aaron, are we just chatting here or are you going somewhere with this? Mitch, were you ever with Nadia? I'm not going to answer that. Were you with any other women during that first year? Like maybe a woman by the name of Mary Dewey? I think there's openings in the next term of First Lady Charm School, honey. You should enroll. Meantime, sit down. So help me if she doesn't get off this kick, I'll throw her out the door myself, or maybe out the window. Sorry, Erin. You haven't answered my question. Nor will I, unless you can give me an extremely good reason why I should. I think I can. By the way, Mary's not after you. She died last year. I'm sorry. You knew her then? I'm sorry to hear that anyone is deceased, but... Yeah, I did know her. This is your DNA profile. Where'd you get that? I borrowed it from the records in the Westbrook case. That's illegal! Lots of things are. Here's Mary's profile. She was my mother, you see. And here's mine. And here's the test results. I always wondered if this day had come. But after so many years, you start to breathe easier. Mary never told me she was... I know. I know. I wasn't ready for the pressure of Washington. And there were... women. Mostly flings. 
Mary was the only relationship. You know, I almost... Well, anyway, I didn't. We broke it off. If I'd only known... I'm not looking for any money. I, I'm just... I'm not gonna expose you. I just wanted to know. I wanted to meet you. And be a part of your life. Once in a while, if you'd let me. You're afraid I wouldn't let you be a part of my life? You just try to get away. I'll sit these agents on you. Assuming I still have them after today, that is. You'd have freckles on your arm. Just a few. <laughs> Red hair. Blue eyes? Oh, greenish. Close enough. You know, you're a walking bundle of recessive characteristics just like me. And here I thought I was kicked out of the gene pool. Well, I'm happy to carry him on. How does your blight feel? My what? You know, after you get a bad sunburn, your skin. Mine all peels off in one solid sheet. Solid except oh. for the pinholes where my arm hairs were. That's gross. <laughs> does it happen to you, though? It's not ladylike to talk about that. Is that a yes? Yes? <laughs> <laughs> I've got my mom's chin and nose. Good thing you don't have my nose. <laughs> yeah, you do look a lot like her. Well, I think I need to go to the bedroom and smooth things over. Daddy. Now there's the sweetest word in the English language. Don't worry. I'm not going to rat you out. You can still run for president if you want to. We are all waiting for whatever Senator McCabe has to tell us. Senator. Ladies, gentlemen, members of the press, thank you. This isn't going to be easy, so please bear with me. Fallen I've seen too much of this. Crazy life Let the day slip away So that's the story. Thank you all for coming on such short notice. Since there are rumors that I might be drafted by the convention, I wanted to set the record straight. I need to spend more time with my family. So I'm resigning my Senate seat as of noon tomorrow. Senator, 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 come on, one point, one state, one state. To fill my unexpired term, the governor has appointed someone who's been a driving force in my career. So ladies and gentlemen, may I present Senator in Waiting, Ramona McCabe. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I want you to know I'm going to work very hard for the benefit of my party and my constituency. The remainder of this year has the potential to be both productive and exciting. And I want you to know if you put your trust in me, it will be well placed. How long have you known about me? Mom told me about you about 10 years ago. You know what impressed me most about you? What? That Asian Goodwill tour in 05, where that Japanese reporter tour. Oh, please! Tried to ask you if you're looking forward to the next election. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else wanted to fall through the floor, but you were so gracious. Yes. Yes, it is. The senator's been drafted? Which one? Oh. No, no, that's not what I want. No, that's not what I want. Mm hmm. Yes, that would be great. Thank you so much. Well, depending on what the Dems do, this might be the mother of all battles. Bloody is the cat fight at the end of Aliens? Bloodier, I think. <laughs> So, Mr. McCabe, if elected, what would be your top priority as First Lady? Redecorating the East Room, definitely. If I can, I'll give you a kiss tonight Let you know everything's gonna be alright I'll be back sometime, I'm sure City walls don't break me tied for first place in the short screenplay contest at the spring 2005 Bare Bones Film Fest. The story is written so that it might be talking about the 2008 election and then again it might be 2012 or 2016. It was shot the weekend before Christmas 2005 and took nine hours to shoot, plus a few minutes for the press conference scene. Doug Phillips, who also played the future presidential candidate, is a veteran of indie film production with two feature films and eight short films to his credit.